<laughs> Easy bruiser. Morning, everybody. Chad, Doss Farms. I didn't really, I didn't really think this through. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have called him yet. Whoops. <laughs> Hang on, we're in trouble. <laughs> You're drooling. Wow, it's cold. All right, I got a question. Look at the size of that goat. Woo. Cabela. Okay, first off, hang on. 46 degrees, ladies and gents. Four, six. You right there? Okay. Well, you got back up. You're holding up the whole train. Dude, Whoa. Bruce. Whoa. Whoa. No, 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 no. Hey, hey, Tina, move on. All right, it's gonna be windy, but you guys are gonna to wanna to watch this. Bruce, yeah, no. No, no. Oh. Oh. That'll get your heart rate going, huh? My goodness. What do you say, Mama? What's on there? Actually, you can have some because I love you. I like you a lot. What was that, Bruce? Butters. Looking, looking like a Doss Farms goat right there now. Getting bigger. Look at the fluffy butts. Look at them. <laughs> Bad drag. Oh my goodness. Tipsy. What are you saying, buddy? It's okay. Hi, buddy. Hey. So watching the footage back from the last video, if you couldn't tell, it was a similar situation. Cabela was right behind me, but Donka Donk was right here and he couldn't see Cabela. But trust me, if that donkey didn't like this dog, we wouldn't be doing this right now. He also wouldn't let me pet him. So it's okay. There you go, buddy. <laughs> Bunch of hungry, hungry hippos. Now that's not a, it's not a full bag of feed yet. In case you guys didn't know, in Northeast Oklahoma, it's cold. It's officially cold. It's very cold. And you want to know an even cooler story? We don't have any heat. Yeah, true story. No heat. So we bought a mini split from a 
very reputable company, probably the company everybody knows the best. And it blew ice cold air all summer long. And then winter came around, or about a month ago, I knew that winter was approaching and we decided to turn the heat on. Guess what, the heater doesn't work. And I'm not gonna name that company's name, but they're very, very well known. They're not cheap, they're not affordable. It's an investment and we bought the best that they had. And I reached out to them because the heater wouldn't work and they kind of gave me the runaround via service. And I reached out to them again and they gave me the runaround. I reached out to them again. You guys know how this is gonna go. And they gave me the runaround. So I finally messaged them on Instagram, which is my favorite thing to do. I also commented on probably the last 10 of their previous posts and let them know that I had a small social media following and that I had a longhorn named Finn that don't take no for an answer. And all of a sudden, like they'd never heard of me before, all of a sudden, they shipped me a brand new unit. Almost no questions asked when they heard that somebody might hear that their service, I don't like saying the word S-U-C-K-S, but it does. Here's the skinny, here's the short story. We're working with a different company, a bigger company, a company I would prefer. I actually have, my cousin is married to a guy named Luke, Luke and Shay, and he has Tool Hand Luke. And he does everything from, like he specializes in HVAC stuff, but going on guys. Hey, when I was editing this, I pulled up that still shot, that screenshot of Luke's Facebook page. And I didn't realize that his personal cell phone number is on there. Now this isn't what you think. I'm not blurring it out. What I want you to do is text him. It'll be hilarious. He has no idea I'm doing this. Neither does Shay, but it'll be okay. Trust me. Uh, Shay's Luke's wife, my cousin. Go text him and just say, can't wait to meet you at Chad and Ray's. Uh, thanks for helping Chad and Ray, something like that. Just absolutely blow him up. Okay, I've done this before, if you guys remember in the past, and we sent somebody, similar situation, we sent somebody like 800 text messages in 24 hours. Do it again, I mean, absolutely blow up his phone. I want him to text me when he sees it, you know, Chad and Ray, DOS Farms. He'll literally text me and be like, what did you do? Okay, but text him and then go follow him. I'm gonna link it down below, especially if you're in our area because he can come work at your place, right? Okay, he'll drive, he'll come see you. All right, thanks guys. He does a little bit of everything. I mean, he's done some decks, he's done some remodels, he's done some teardowns, new additions in people's home, kind of a catch-all. He could definitely GC your stuff, so stay tuned. We'll see if Luke can help us out on our build. This did my little brother Matt's HVAC, and Matt is thoroughly pleased, which we knew we would be. So, ran into Luke at Toyota the other day, having my truck looked at, underlated, 5,000 mile service kind of thing. And he was like, dude, I got you, man. Call me when those mini splits come in. I told him who the company was we were working with. It's Pioneer. And Pioneer is sending us a heater, like an air conditioner, a mini split, a very, very nice one. Actually, they're sending us four very, very nice ones. One for Case's room. One for the Littles room, which Ray and I share with the little boys, but that's about to change, stay tuned. One for the she shed, and then a little bit larger one for the great room area. So we're very, very pleased. Very grateful to Pioneer. It's all gonna happen. And you're gonna get to meet my cousin's husband, Luke. Possibly my cousin, we'll see. They have a brand new baby too, so I say brand new. It's under a year, so brand new. Speaking of babies, look how fluffy she is. Hey, how come, how come we can pet mom, but you can't touch baby from this year and you can't touch baby from last year? Mom will eat out of your hand. She get in a truck for a banana. But anyway, yeah, I've already got tracking information on those mini splits from Pioneer. They are on their way, super cool. Oops, sorry, I don't wanna move. Stay put, you're staying warm, it's okay. So, and remember we've been over this. They're not cold. This weather is nothing to them. There's not an animal out here that's cold. He is huge. Look at him. Look at him next to June. 
Golly. Look at Frank behind him. That's a 200 pound goat, man. That is a 200 pound goat all day. What a stinker, man. By the way, his, it would be his right horn grows and then falls off. We've seen it do it probably four times since we've owned him. The left one will do it as well. If it doesn't, I have a tool that's like, it's got two handles. I don't know what you call it. It's some kind of knife, but it basically looks like a, a chain saw, like a, a saw string. And it's got a handle on this side and a handle on this side and you work it back and forth and that's how you cut it. You've probably seen it like on viral videos where they cut a horn out of a, you know, growing into an animal skull. So, sorry, midstream, sorry. Oh no, no. Uh. Oh. Hey, what? I think she wanted some love. I scared her. My bad. Tipsy? Should I say hi? Should I say hi? Hi, buddy. I love what you've done with your hair. The cockleburrows everywhere. Sorry, Mom. You came to me. Huge shout out to Pioneer. I'm super happy. So, tomorrow, boy, by the way, we were supposed to get 10 inches of rain. I think I told you guys that in the last video. We've got 0.3, literally 0.3, the third of an inch of rain. We were supposed to get 10. However, the system that is rolling in currently, I, other than an act of God, there's no way it doesn't hit us. No way. Which it's always an act of God when it goes north or south. God knows where it's going to rain. Okay, I get it. When the weatherman's like, it's going to rain, and then it doesn't. <laughs> God obviously knew it wasn't going to rain. All right, these chickens are laying eggs somewhere else. I've pretty much decided that. Boop. Oh, sorry. Dog on it. I'm sorry. My bad. Hey, that's not for you. Goodness. You a land hippo now? You're hanging out with the cows too much? Excuse me, pardon me. Oh, it's open. You guys can get that. <laughs> Cowboy, we haven't seen much of you, buddy. You doing all right? Still ruling the roost? Huh? Else they always slow down right before the first frost. Always. But that's why we got some 20% cubes in there to keep their protein up. Cause I don't mind if they slow down, that's okay. I just don't want them to slow down because they're not getting enough nourishment to make eggs. And what I need you guys to remember and tell people down in the comments, if you see silly comments, cause I know everybody tells me I'm a city slicker cause I've only been doing this three or four years, but eventually you're no longer a city slicker and you have some experience like I do. Okay. Like Ray and I do last year across the country, mid December, negative 20 degree wind chill. We had negative 20 degree wind chills for three days on this farm. You know where those chickens were? Right out here, walking around eating. They had a coop up there by the house. No heat lamp, no heat source. Totally fine. Didn't lose a single bird. All these animals, also totally fine. And other than Patrick and Frank, all these animals, with the exception of the little goats, all these animals, and Lily. So we got four babies that have not been through a winter yet. Talk on it and Roxy and Ruby. Chad, come on. We have too many. No, we don't. We always need more animals. <laughs> almost said we had too many, but we definitely don't. And we have baby puppies coming. If you guys didn't know, if you missed it, Sadie's pregnant. We have baby cavapoos coming. I forget what Ray said. F1B cavapoo, tiny poodles, micro poos. I don't know, something like that. I really want to get a, a Shih Tzu and a poodle so we can have some little poosh. See what I did? They've all wintered, or they've been wintered, or they're built for this, especially Frank. Frank thrives in this, man. Frank's mom, Junebug, has been promising Frank it will get cooler since he was born May 12th. She's been saying, son, I know it's hot. So Frank, what are you doing? Stop it. No, listen, Linda. That's what he does. He'll just walk towards you. You have to move. You have to get out of his way. He will knock you down. He is huge. What are you doing, Tina? <laughs> Woo. 
Maggie, hang on my light work. I was just bragging about you, Frank, how proud I am. But he's excited. He's very excited about this winter weather. He thrives in it. He'll probably still go skinny dipping, even in the winter. It's pretty cool up here. You guys want to see? There you go. Standing on the back of the truck. Whoop. Palm in the frame. Oh, man. <laughs> Easy. Easy. Oh. Tomorrow, we have space heaters coming because the mini splits will not be here. And the mini splits are overpowered. We only have 700 square feet. They are sending us enough mini splits to do like, I think it's like 1,000 to 1,500 square feet. So they're literally doubling what we need. Uh, but we do need to get through tomorrow night. It always does this in Northeast Oklahoma, Southwest Missouri. We call this the four state area, Northwest Arkansas, Southeast Kansas. It always does this. We get like a couple nights where there's a hard frost and then by Thanksgiving, we'll be wearing shorts. It'll be 65 degrees outside. So we just got to get through the next couple days, but we've all got crazy good heated blankets, long, warm clothes. Everybody's safe. Everybody's healthy. Everybody's happy. So just got to get through a couple days of, uh, well, really just 24 hours because the space heaters will be here tomorrow. Hey, hey, you know exactly who I'm talking to. Don't give me the side eye. Don't give me the side eye. Yeah. Cabela. All right, check it out. If it looks like it's got a little uh, shoulder lean, it's probably because it does. Pardon the mess, we're cleaning out a loft. Whew. Looking frosty. We're cleaning out a loft because you can probably figure out what that's gonna mean. Let me just tell you something. I ain't built for a full size bed, especially when I gotta share it. <laughs> With, with a four-year-old more on that later if you guys do me a favor thank you a couple people down below uh tool hand luke that is my cousin's husband but i've known luke now i think he's been in and out of my life in and out of my life like i've been dating <laughs> you're, you're welcome buddy he has been in our lives in our family's lives i think approaching 10 years uh it's been a while he's just a good honest dude and he's going to come help us with these mini splits it's going to be awesome so I'm going to tag his Facebook page. That's all he's got down below. I'm trying to talk him into a YouTube channel because uh, it'd be pretty cool because his stuff would be like, um, I think he told me that he just got done with a project where he was like redoing somebody's great room, like put in some huge picture windows for somebody. So he's not just an HVAC guy. It's just what he's licensed and, and what not to do that. But anyway, he can fill you in on all that. So if you're watching this, buddy, trust me, you're going to get the, you'll, you'll be able to explain anything you want. Sawdust, I think. But yeah, winter is coming. Now, like I explained earlier, it's gonna get cold the next couple days and then it's gonna warm back up. And then I'm gonna plant some fescue and it's gonna feel like spring way more than it is winter. But this had to be done. So pardon me right now, there's a mess and I'm sure somebody's gonna have something to say about it, but you know what? There's a memory verse that we all know from Sunday school as kids. Worry about the plank in your eye before you worry about the toothpick in mine, okay? It's just a mess. And it's outside, for goodness sakes. We got rid of the shed, as you know, so we had to make what was important fit in here. Some other important stuff fit in the shipping container. And then we have a storage unit in town. It's part of life, it's called sacrifice, okay? But the reason this looks messy is we had to pull it all away from the house. Well, let me show you this, because it looks, it looks the cleanest but we skirted all along here. And I just took fence boards. And by the way, these are, these are like uh, five eighths, maybe three quarter. Okay, I almost said six eighths. They may be three quarter thick. They're not the, we bought them at the lumber yard. They're not the, you know, big box store, whatever. But uh, anyway, we're gonna skirt this entire thing with those boards, contrary to popular belief pipes don't freeze because you have a hard frost. It's very unlikely, especially when you're using Upinor, like we did, um, and Poly Blue. Okay, they don't just freeze at 32 degrees because that's when water freezes, all right? They do have a little bit of a pressure resistance, but really what freezes pipes isn't the air pressure, like the, the ambient air pressure. That's that's not what freezes pipes. Now it can, I mean, negative nine is negative nine, okay? I'm not, I'm not blind to that. But what really freezes pipes is wind. That's when it gets 
dangerous and causes a lot of problems. And so anyway, my plan, I'm gonna show you this right here. What I wanna do is put a footer down here, like a piece of trim. We'll put one here too, it'll just be more decorative. Down here, I couldn't care less. I may actually use more of those boards. Now you're gonna ask, what are they screwed into on the other side? They're not. Top is screwed in, the bottoms, not screwed in at all. They're actually up against, because we had a lot of washout. This thing's been sitting here for a year and a half now. Uh, now it has the aggregate in it, so it sets up like a foundation, but no, it's not as hard as concrete. But then again, it is hard as concrete. I mean, you wouldn't want to like drive equipment across it, but it's pretty stout. So what I want to do, and this has been done, okay? This has been done. There's people living up north, way further north than me, that actually what they'll do is they'll put like a retaining wall right here and just backfill against it. So what I'm thinking is we would like a little walkway right here down to Ray's cabin. So I'm thinking about putting maybe a two by 10 by 12 or a few of them right here, taking all those huge rocks that you know we have all over the property and then sitting them in. So it's almost gonna be like, it's gonna look like a raised bed, raised a bed, not <laughs> raised bed. It's gonna look like a raised bed and I'm gonna put those huge rocks in there and then I'm gonna pour clean half inch washed rock in there. If you don't know what that is, half inch washed rock, cleaned rock, you can walk on it barefoot. It feels pretty good. It's like smooth stone. Have some where the greenhouse was. Un momento. I gotta run, nobody wants to watch that. All right, so we used to have a greenhouse right here. And I don't know, Eh, half inch might be pushing it. Maybe it's three quarter washed, but they rinse this. They get all the aggregate off of it and it feels good to walk on. It doesn't hurt your feet like a driveway. So I'm thinking about making a path to Ray's cabin with that. And if it's inside of like a two by 10 or a two by 12, we can always, when we build a house or whatever, we can always pull those boards and I'll have all that rock right there. And you'll say, oh, you Chad, but then you're gonna have all your rocks back. It's, listen, it's a process. It's a marathon, not a sprint, Bruce. For... Woo! Hi, butters. You don't have to put up with that. You can go hide somewhere. Whew. Anyway, I need you to go blow up. I'm just gonna say cousin Luke. I'm gonna say, I need you to go blow up my cousin's page, Luke. And just, just, just blow up his Facebook. Whether you're seeing this on YouTube or Facebook, just go blow it up say man we're so thankful so excited you can come help chad and ray and the boys so that we don't freeze this winter and ray doesn't leave me and go stay in a hotel <laughs> it, it almost happened she's currently under a heated blanket in the house playing games with the boys so i think she unlocked the door now so i should be able to get in after i've finished most of this <laughs> i actually ran out of boards no more boards so i need to get some tomorrow but anyway yeah almost all the way around the whole cabin I'm gonna put like a raised bed and then backfill it with rock Maybe not over here because over here there's very little gap. Like that's like, I don't know, 10 inches. Whereas over here, we're almost three feet off the ground. That's as high as they would actually go when they were sitting it. So you guys remember that gray wall? Still there. I'll tell you what I'm excited about when Luke comes down here is getting rid of those window units. They have served us well, but I miss our windows. I miss, having, I miss being able to open them. And of course that's the benefit with a mini split. We'll be able to do that. All right, on another note, what I'm about to show you is definitely up to code. If you don't know what code is, that's the laws and rules you have to follow for your own safety. I'm gonna get in trouble for this one. So, in a pinch, we got Romax laying on the ground and it's hooked up <laughs> over the new pig shack. I shouldn't say new pig shack, but the pig shack was over there. But to block them from the north wind, we actually moved it over here on the side of Ray's she shed. And as you can tell, they're super happy about it. So we got them some fresh straw today. They're super happy. By the way, just to hit anybody off, it's going to say something silly. Everybody acts like Ray don't do nothing. That young girl moved that over there. Bless her heart. In the rain. That thing's not light. She moved that over there in the pouring rain. And again, bless her heart, guess what it did right after she got it over there and settled it. She had to like walk it over there. But guess what happened right after she got done? 
it quit raining. Like it was total downpour when we were moving it. Then we got it settled and it quit raining. So anyway, let's get away from Bruce. Go look at the pond. Well, so much for all that rain we were supposed to get. It was supposed to rain all day and it has, it's just sprinkling. There was like one period of heavy rain. That was it. So someday we're going to have a pond out here. If I got to turn the hose on for 10 years, that's what I know. I'm going to go inside and get out of these wet clothes. And these are all, this is all rain gear. Somebody always calls me out. They're like, oh, you're in that heavy cotton hoodie. It's rain gear. Literally rain defender. Carhartt. Look it up. Get out of these clothes. Take a warm shower. Edit this video because it is three o'clock the day you guys are seeing this. 1500. Everybody's healthy and well. I don't even remember what I talked about in the beginning, but just so you know, there's not an animal on this farm that's gonna be that's gonna be cold at 28 degrees. Not even close. So when we hit like negative 20, you know, mid-December, January, something like that, then we'll look into barns and I shouldn't say barns, loafing sheds, shelters, just like what we used last year, which served its purpose for every animal on this farm. It's an animal of its kind. If it's a new animal, like the babies we have, everybody's fine. Okay. Woo. So quiet. Beautiful. Y'all be good. Don't work too hard. Don't make it weird. Thank y'all very, very much. God bless. Deuces.